Washington Journal continues. Alan St. Pierre is with the uh, National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. He is their executive director and is here to talk to us about Proposition 19 in California, which, if approved, would allow adults over the age of 21 to possess, possess up to an ounce of cannabis. Why should the voters in California vote for this? They will likely vote in the majority for this because after 74 years, marijuana prohibition is an abject failure. We've had 20 million arrests since 1965. We'll have 850,000 arrests this year. 90% of them will be for possession only. In my lifetime, I'm 45 years old, the government stated at my birth we should reduce tobacco smoking. And without taking the beautiful Constitution and bending it into a pretzel, <clears throat> we've reduced smoking by about 50%. We didn't arrest people. We didn't drug test. We didn't racially profile. We didn't take away student loans. We did all of these important things without using the criminal justice system to achieve them. So if government stated goal, which I think is supposed to be the base of our discussion, is that people aren't supposed to use marijuana, with tobacco, a drug that kills 400,000 people a year, is highly addictive, unlike marijuana, um, government has achieved that goal to a large degree. So for that analytical reason alone, let alone as a stakeholder, someone like myself, um, I don't think I'm a criminal if I use marijuana in the privacy of my home. Joining us from New York is Asa Hutchinson, former administrator of the uh, U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, also known as the DEA. He served in that position from 2001 to 2003. Sir, why should the uh, voters in California vote against Proposition 19? Well, uh, I would certainly uh, think it's important that we uh, reduce the use of illegal drugs such as marijuana and uh, history teaches us that if you legalize it use will go up and I think that's a great concern to anybody who's involved in public policy but also as a parent and a community leader. Uh, I think we put this in context uh, what uh, drove me to be on here today was the fact that uh, all former administrators of the DEA, nine of them uh, joined together and they've served in both Republican and Democrat administrations uh, asking the Attorney General to say very clearly that he would oppose and the administration opposes Proposition 19 in California which would legalize small amounts of marijuana. One of the principal reasons is uh, that uh, it would take our country in the wrong direction and it would be uh, in violation of federal law. So the people of California need to know, even though that they might take a step to legalize, it's all still a violation of federal law and still would be a criminal offense. So the objective might be to raise tax monies, but I don't think it will be successful in that arena because it would still be a violation of federal law. Mr. Hutchinson, you've laid out a lot that we're going to try and discuss in the next 40 minutes. But the first thing I want to touch on, and um, Mr. St. Pierre has touched on this as well as other folks, about the uh, parallels, they say, between the use of marijuana and the use of alcohol and how um, in the 20s and 30s that the prohibition against alcohol didn't work and that the prohibition against marijuana use in this uh, country is, is similar to that and is not working as well. Your thoughts? Well, let's put it in historical perspective. We had the uh, height of the drug problems in our country in the 70s and the early 80s when we engaged as a nation to really go after the huge trafficking of cocaine particularly, but also marijuana and other drugs into the United States. Since we engaged as a nation, since the late 70s and early 80s, overall drug use has declined 50% in the United States. Let me restate that. Overall drug use has declined 50 percent. If that was engaged or, or put the criteria to any other social problem, it would be considered a huge success. And so I think the, the idea that there has not been success in reducing a, a harmful drug uh, in our country and its use because we've engaged in both education, rehabilitation, and enforcement, I think is misleading. Clearly we have had success and we would give up on that success uh, if we uh, decriminalized it or legalized one of those harmful substances, which is marijuana. Mr. St. Pierre, your response to uh, Mr. Hutchinson. <clears throat> well, to the success that uh, Mr. Hutchinson claims we enjoyed regarding reducing the amount of people who use marijuana or other drugs, um, 
Did we achieve that? Um, all we really achieved were people in surveys from the government when there are two data sets. The government asked children if they use marijuana, and they asked people like, as happened to me here in D.C. about four years ago in my own home, in my own living room, asked me about, ironically, uh, whether or not I use marijuana in a government survey, the house-to-house -house survey. That's the way that we measure whether or not we're winning or losing. This is a very poor way to measure this. Uh, we would look at things like arrests. Those have never diminished. The people in jail, government expenses, in um, the amount of uh, marijuana that's interdicted in the United States, the amount of marijuana that's grown domestically. So I think uh, Mr. Hutchinson would acknowledge all of those have actually gone up over the years. The only thing he's citing is the willingness of people to acknowledge on surveys from the government, no less, about this. So I just don't think that's a criteria one would use to measure success. We've got some uh, points regarding uh, Proposition 19 in California, which is on the ballot for uh, November. These come from uh, yeson19.com. Uh, the first says uh, it allows, uh, Proposition 19 allows adults over 21 to possess up to an ounce of cannabis. State and local governments can choose to levy sales tax, increase penalties for selling to minors, maintaining criminal penalties for driving under the influence, bans marijuana smoking in public uh, school grounds or in the presence of minors, and protects med uh, medicinal uh, cannabis patients' rights. We're going to get to all of those in just a few seconds. We want to let you know if you want to get involved in the conversation, the number is 202-737-0001 for Republicans, Democrats 202-737-0002, and Independents 202-628-0205. You can also send us emails and Twitter our first call comes on our Republican line, Ben, out of Pennsylvania, uh, DuPont, Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm calling just because I have a generalized comment to Mr. St. Pierre. I mean, my area here in Pennsylvania has become absolutely inundated with drug use. I mean, and it doesn't start off, it's just marijuana. I mean... It, Nobody wakes up one morning and says, I'm going to do heroin or I'm going to do cocaine. It starts off with an entry-level drug such as marijuana. I know this from personal experience. I've been there. And I mean, sure, there are people who have no problem with it progressing on. But for children, this, this is, and I mean, you could sit and say, oh, well, we're going to have it where you have to be over 18. But let's say the kids could get a cigarette anytime they want. Kids could get alcohol anytime they want. And alcohol or marijuana would be just as easy. Mr. Well, St. Pierre? In fact, the gateway drugs are caffeine, coffee, tobacco, alcohol, then marijuana. Marijuana is the first illegal drug that children use. It's not the first drug that they use. So it's not a gateway drug in any respect of the word. And thankfully it's not. Um, we'd have tens of millions of heroin and cocaine abusers in this country if marijuana was a gateway drug. And secondly, that according to government surveys, the ones I just mentioned a moment ago, for the last 15 years, children acknowledge they have more access to uncontrolled, untaxed marijuana and they do control products like alcohol, tobacco, and pharmaceutical products. Our next call comes from Vani in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, on our line for independence. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, and thank you so much for C-SPAN. Uh, I would like to direct my question to the former DEA agent. How many people, normal working people, are made into criminals every day in this country because they smoke marijuana, not just for their high. I have a husband that suffers from cancer right now. I have a son that suffers from an eye disease. And you know what is amazing? Marijuana, not the pill form, but the smoking and the so-called high is what contributes to their relief. I would like to know how much money the pharmaceutical companies and the alcohol companies have contributed to this country. Asa Hutchinson, former administrator of the uh, DEA. Go ahead, sir. Well, a, a couple of qu questions you raise. First of all, this is not a debate about medical marijuana. Uh, this is a debate about 
legalizing pot smoking for anybody that's over 21 in California. And uh, you raised the question, and Alan's mentioned it as well, that how many people have been arrested for marijuana use or marijuana trafficking. And I think you have to separate those two. Sure, there's been thousands of arrests in, in America uh, for marijuana possession. Uh, many times it simply amounts to a, a citation. You appear in court and uh, you pay a small fine. So it's, it's not something that in and of itself destroys a young person's life forever because you've had a marijuana arrest. But if you do it different than that, uh, where it's just totally legal, clearly usage will go up. And I think that's the fundamental question. Do you want marijuana use to increase in America or to decrease? And if you want it to decrease, then legalizing is not the right approach to it. Uh, so uh, I think that it's, it's misleading to say that we spend all of these amounts on incarceration costs when much of our enforcement efforts uh, are local police that make their decisions on citations or how to proceed. The DEA simply goes after the major traffickers. That's not going to change whether you enact Proposition 19 or not you still would be illegal to be trafficking in thousands of pounds of marijuana as the cartels have done. Dennis on our line for Democrats out of Davies, Florida. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. It's good seeing you again. Um, I talked to, uh, I called in last year, but I've been busy. I got a job. I was unemployed, and now I'm employed. What are your thoughts about our topic today about legalizing mar uh, marijuana? Okay, I have a question for the, um, the administrator. And um, it's a question and a comment, if you allow me. Um, I think we need to turn this debate on to where it should be, on the economic issue. Also, uh, it was, the comment was made earlier that uh, legal is, um, the usage of tobacco was reduced uh, by the government because it was legalized. Therefore, it could logically be assumed that if you do the same thing with marijuana to reduce the use of marijuana, legalize it, and the same effect will occur as it did with tobacco. And Dennis, I don't recall that. any point in our history where uh, the use of tobacco has been illegal. No, the question is is that because it was legal, tobacco was legal, they were able to reduce the use of tobacco because it was legal. Make something illegal and you will naturally cause the, uh, the usage to go up. Asa Hutchinson. Well, uh, whenever alcohol uh, was uh, uh, legalized again when prohibition ended. Uh, I think that it's clear alcohol is a uh, major consumable item today. I don't think you can say that alcohol consumption has gone down simply because we uh, ended prohibition. And I don't think anyone would claim that marijuana use would go down if you legalize. I think it would have obviously just the opposite effect. Uh, you, the caller raised the question of the economic issue, and it's already been raised, about how much tax revenue it might bring in if you regulated it. One, I don't think that should be a motivating factor for social policy in the United States. Just because f governments need money, I don't think uh, we should be looking for products like this to regulate and tax. But secondly, this is not a panacea for California. Uh, they say a, a local government can regulate and tax uh, marijuana use or grow growth and uh, the companies involved in it well no one is going to sign a sales tax form or any other tax form whenever by doing so you're admitting that you are violating federal criminal law and so as long as it's a violation of federal law I don't see how it's going to be a, a revenue generator for the states well it, it might surprise you Asa that there are probably 25 communities already in California where people are happy to sign those sale taxes and those bean counters over at the government are happy to take the receipts in fact uh, just if I can remember them correctly Colorado, New Mexico, the District of Columbia, Rhode Island, New Mexico, and Maine. All of these states and their attorney generals and those phalanxes of government lawyers have already signed off on this. So on medical marijuana, they are already collecting these taxes. So you're maybe making a distinction that lawyers appreciate, but those of us uh, in the lay world don't. Mr. Hutchinson, did you well, want to respond? Uh, 